Whether you're a brand new plant parent or an experienced battle-hardened collector, one of the best things about starting with tiny plants is that not only are they really satisfying to watch grow, and they teach you a ton about the type of plant you're cultivating, but they're also a super cost-effective way to grow your collection. Getting your hands on seeds, seedlings, bulbs, corms, tubers, or any other kind of baby plants saves you the hassle of paying for shipping larger plants, thinking about potential cold, heat damage, or travel damage your new babies might incur in transit, and even worrying about esoteric things like bugs and pests, to a certain extent. If you're really looking to challenge yourself, you can even harvest and sow your own seeds, or go so far as to hybridize plants yourself, all in the comfort of your own home, backyard, greenhouse, or grow tent. You know what they say, dream big, but start small. So welcome back to Propist. I'm Nick, these are the plants. We're gonna to talk today about repotting and transplanting little tiny anthurium seedlings. I have a whole wide range of them here today. Anywhere from tiny just post seedling to slightly larger and ready to get transplanted to a little bit bigger pot. There's a couple of these that really, really need repot, like pretty bad. I think I'm going to have a little bit of fun using some new seedling trays I picked up recently and um, hopefully you guys can follow along and have have a little bit of fun too. As I go through each one of these, just because seedlings, you can't really see with the traits of the actual larger plant. I'll try and show you a mature form of each one of these beside me while I'm repotting. And you can then hopefully get an idea of what I'm dealing with when I go through each one of these plants. So about half of these plants-ish were imports. The other half I would say were bred locally here in Canada by Northern Plant Room, which is a plant seller that I've used a number of times. Somia over there has an amazing Zula Ace of Spades dark form that is the parent to many of her seedlings and she sells a lot of seedlings to Canadian purchasers. I have bought a number of plants from her and I have a few of them here to show you. So most of them are pretty tiny and a couple of these have been pretty badly neglected that I feel kind of guilty about. You know what? We're getting around to it today and we're going to get it over with. I have a challenge to myself. I have about... I don't want to count yet, but I have a number of plants here. You can see there's at least like, how many containers do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight containers, but there's a lot more plants than that. Now I'm going to probably pop most of these into a new seedling tray that I picked up just to experiment. And then the slightly larger ones are going to go into these drink cups. These are just clear plastic containers. If you have checked out my previous video, and if you haven't, take a look. I'll link it in the card right up here. You can go and check it out. That was my semi-hydro gear guide. I did talk about these cups in that gear guide. I'm using them here. This is, for the most part, not going to be semi-hydro, I think, today, because we're going to be using tree fern fiber for a good chunk of these guys. But there'll be some perlite. Let's work our way through these, and I will see what we end up with at the end. And we'll kind of work through each one of these individually and see what I think it needs, what kind of cleanup it needs some of these desperately needs repot like they needed bad and some of them are you know they're already in a decent substrate or at least in a decent sized container like these two guys and they probably don't need anything special when we get down to business here i have a good number of things to repot and i'm kind of wondering where to start i think i'm looking at this guy because since he's right in front of me we can probably do this one pretty easily this is a tazula ace of spades crossed with an anthurium waraquianum hopefully this is focusing yeah, there you go. Looks pretty good, eh? As far as I know, that's what that cross is. The other option here is that this is a self hybrid, so this would be like a Tizula Ace of Spades dark form self, which would be pretty cool too. So I think either case is a winner. The current size of this plant, I really can't tell what it is. So for the time being, I know it's half Ace of Spades Tizula dark form. The other half, surprise. We'll find out when it gets a little bigger. It's possible I could contact the seller and find out if maybe she knows what it is now. It's a good chance of that, but yeah, I like the surprise. So why don't we just go with that? So this guy is sitting kind of loosely in this moss cup here. I'm gonna do my best to take it out, demossify it. Oh, look at that. It's just sitting there pretty loose. So this guy came out without too much trouble. Those roots look pretty good. Those are quite nice. You guys see that all right? Nice white roots. I think I'm gonna do is give these guys a little dip so I can get any leftover moss off of them first. Since this is going into tree fern and not semi-hydro, I'm not particularly worried about leaving little bits of sphagnum moss on here, but you know, 
Yeah, the more you can clean off, the better. So for all these plants, I'm going to try and give you guys a picture of the mature form. Uh, in the case of the hybrids, I'll see if I can find you pictures of the mother and or father slash pollen parent and kind of get a good look at what it's supposed to look like. I mean, particularly anthurium hybrids tend to pick up traits from either parent. So some will have more dominant traits than others and really no hybrid kind of looks the same. So there's a good chance that, you know, one hybrid looks nothing like the next one. So the only way you're going to find out what these actually look like when they grow to full size is to keep watching this channel and subscribe. Yeah, that was a pretty slick segue. What I'm going to do now is give these roots a little rinse. This is just water. Nothing special going on here. Going to give it a little dip. Little bit of moss coming off, nothing too big of a deal there. And I could probably put a drop of hydrogen peroxide in here, but feeling lazy. I think we're good. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just lay this guy down over here. Also, keep track of what these guys are because I have no clear identification here of what I'm looking at. I'm going to label them, and honestly, a lot of these guys look really similar at this size, so I kind of know what the two plants in one here is, but um, yeah just to spare myself the agony of mismatching something later. I've got my handy foam memo. Uh, foam memo, yeah. Label printer. This thing, if you watched my semi-hydro gear guide, I mentioned it towards the end. Again, there's a link in the description below and I will have a card somewhere floating around for you. This thing is awesome. I've got a full kind of mini review in the semi-hydro guide. This thing has saved me so much grief and hassle. It's so nice to just be able to print something whenever I feel like it. See here. Managed to get my label sorted. I'm gonna print it. You guys can watch, it's a lot of fun. Oh, it's so satisfying. There we go, turn it off, move on. There is my label. I even managed to throw an emoji in there. It's not much of an emoji, it's a question mark, but still. So this is my Tazula Dark X Barquianum or self, not really sure. So I'm just gonna leave that here, tag it on my little mat here. I'm gonna move on to the next guy because I'm gonna probably pot these up at the same time. So this one here, again, this is from Northern Plant Room. Looking pretty good. This one should be particularly interesting. This is the Ace of Spades Tazula Dark Form. Uh, this is crossed with the Anthurium Dark Mama, which is pretty cool. It's a very interesting plant. If you've seen a Dark Mama, I'll put a picture up somewhere around here. Uh, you can take a look at that guy and then compare. But right now, looking pretty small. So this is still a baby. Also in moss, I'm gonna pluck all the moss off of here. These roots look super fuzzy, which is really nice to see. The moss is still moist. They've been on a heat mat in my Millsbo inside these bags. I didn't want them to have direct contact with the heat mat, so I actually had them kind of sitting on top of these plastic lids and open in there. So they were drying out pretty fast, but they were not cooking, which is good. You'll see when I get to the last couple of plants in this batch that those two are not looking quite as hot as these guys. These guys look really nice, so I'm pretty happy with this so far. Let's unmoss this guy. I know I have the potential for reuse of this moss, but I don't trust it because it wasn't my moss to begin with and it's traveled and you know what? I'm better off just using my own moss. Looks like the roots are pretty decent on this guy. I'm pretty impressed. The moss was not packed super hard in here. It's relatively easy to get off. Once you've had an anthurium and moss for an extended period of time, it can be a real bitch to get the moss off afterwards. And I am very happy that I can see some fuzzy white roots, like quite a few of them. These are looking great. And I don't have a huge amount of moss to pluck off of here. This guy actually has a baby leaf growing, which I'm going to be super careful not to break off. You can see right there. I'll see if I can give you guys uh, a zoomed in look there. But that dude, it's a nice looking little guy. That baby leaf is so small that is the easiest thing to break. So I'm going to be super careful with this guy and not snap that off. These roots, yeah, they're fuzzy. They're nice. There's one that looks a little off. I'm going to take my snips here and I'm going to take a little chunk off at the end here. All right, so I'm gonna give these roots a rinse here. They're still a little bit mossy. Looks like it's not too terrible. Again, since I'm gonna be putting this into a combo of tree fern fiber and I believe perlite, I'm not super worried about there being leftover bits of sphagnum moss on the roots, but you know, it's still best to get as much off as you can. At the end of the day, it's easier to get sphagnum moss off when it's dry, but 
Sometimes it just does not pull off and you really have to rinse it. The other thing you can do is let it sit for a couple hours, even overnight in water and let it naturally kind of slough off. But it's still like, you know, with sphagnum moss, it's pretty typical that there's always a little bit left on there. And I think when you're moving to semi-hydro, it's more of an issue. But when you're moving to a substrate like tree fern, it's not a big concern. All right, so this one looks pretty good. I managed to keep that tiny little brand new leaf there alive. I don't know if you can see it kind of peeking up right between the two bigger leaves. Well, let this guy dry. I'm gonna print another label since I have the label printer handy here. Again, so satisfying to press this button. I love that. Never gets old. All right, so we've got our label here. Probably a little too far away. Let me put this guy down. So this one is actually the Dark Mama crossed with the Ace of Spades. So it's the reverse cross of the other one. This is the Ace of Spades, I guess, was the mother plant in this case, and the Dark Mama was the pollen parent. So last but not least from this batch from Northern Plant Room, one of them is in decent shape. The other one is pretty chlorotic looking, and I'm a little worried about the condition of the roots. These guys have both already lost one leaf. That was definitely my because I let the substrate dry out and that was before I kind of added some separation between the heat mat and the container and also have let these sit here too long. They've been literally in my Mills bow hanging out for three weeks now. Completely my fault, nothing to do there. These are both apolalaminum crystal dark crosses. So in this case, if I can find you a, a photo, I will. But apolalaminum, I actually have a very small one that is supposedly an NSC Tropicals one. I, I don't have any paperwork to verify that. I was just told it was possible I got scammed and that we'll see. But it's been growing very, very slowly. I think. I I need to repot that one. I'll do that at a different time. This is actually two plants in here. Quick look at that. What I'm going to do here is first off take a look at the roots because I'm a little concerned. But these are crosses between a papillolaminum and a anthurium crystallinum dark. So the crystallinum dark form, I actually have a few of those in my grow tent right now that are larger size. I would say that they are probably almost ready to sell size wise. So I purchased those from Northern Plant Room quite a while back. Those ones I have in pawn. These guys are half of that, half papillolaminum. So we'll see what they look like when they grow bigger. I really hope that they do. That one of these looks pretty good. I would say that it's nice and green. It's a smaller leaf size, but the second one here, I'm a little concerned that it's not going to make it. So let's take them out of the moss very, very carefully here and see what kind of condition they're in. Well, I feel pretty good about the roots on this guy, but the fact that it's lost the first leaf make me a little concerned that it's not going to put out another leaf before it has a trouble. I'm pretty glad that I'm putting this into tree fern because tree fern is like a pretty good rehab substrate. Now, this has got kind of half of the roots left, so it definitely got a little cooked on the mats. So I'm gonna see what I can do to maybe trim off the dead bits. So this is 99% isopropyl alcohol. I'm gonna give the blades a wipe down just because I don't wanna transfer any bacteria or anything nasty between one plant's roots and another. Since I'm not really propagating anything here, but I am trimming. So there we go, nice and clean. Best to be safe than sorry in this kind of situation. Here we go, let's take this guy. I'm gonna see if I can trim off some of these dead root bits. Some of these tips are brown or like completely gone. So I'm gonna trim them back. Hopefully what's left is still viable. I'd say probably about half the roots are gone. The rest of the roots look pretty decent, but there's definitely some damage to these roots. I think I may actually resort to the tweezers here and see if I can get some of this moss off. picked up these tweezers recently off Amazon and they're pretty good. Like they were super cheap, they're like 10 bucks. They're like nothing special metal wise, but they've got the bent and rubberized tip, which makes it a little safer to use on the plants. So I am happy to be using those. There we go. That works pretty good actually. That's a good call. Let's give these guys a little root bath. Yeah, there we go. There's some more coming off. Looks pretty decent. Now this guy is so tiny, like he's probably gonna have to go into a seedling tray. As you can see there, he's pretty chlorotic looking and I'm a bit worried that this is gonna go down to a stump and it really doesn't have much of a stump to let it grow. So we'll see if it makes it long enough to put another leaf out. Uh, hopefully it does. All right, this guy is as good as it's gonna get for now. This one, the leaf looks like it's in pretty good shape. It's just very tiny. And like I said, these both had two leaves when they shipped to me. I had to take off the two dead leaves that were on there about a week ago. One leaf looks nice and green. So let's see what we can get out of here. This moss, always such a pain. This plant should 
have a much better shot than the first one. I just don't know about the root situation. There's not a lot of roots going on here. But you know what? Less dead roots is better. It's looking decent. Is that the beginning of a new leaf or is that the death of the old leaf? Because we'll see. Very, very tiny, both of these. I'm going to put these guys into a seedling container as opposed to it, their own container. I think this might actually be a new leaf coming. I'm not really sure. It's, it's so small that it's really hard to tell. But you can see that one leaf is nice and green. There's another guy coming there. You can just assume I'm doing this every time now, but I'm giving another alcohol wipe down as I'm switching between plants. I know they were both in the same substrate. It's probably overkill. They were sharing the same container. You know, better safe than sorry. Just don't want these hanging out in the new substrate rotting. Might as well take those bits off. Good enough. Rinse off what we can of the sphagnum moss. I had to be super careful because they're so small. You know, I prefer not to be repotting these at this size. They are so tiny. I'm a bit worried that they're going to cook and I really don't like having them in such small containers. It's just a little risky, especially if I'm not paying super close attention and you miss a day or two and they just dry out. These little seedlings in moss, when they dry out, it's toast pretty much. I've lost a couple in the past from not paying super close attention because of the fact that they were in sphagnum moss. And this is something where in tree fern, it's less of an issue. I am like really happy to be having the option to use tree fern instead here. So I'm gonna do that. This guy is a Papillolaminum X Crystallinum dark form. So I'm gonna let those guys dry a little bit while I move on to some of the other ones that I've got that need to go into tiny containers. These dudes are pretty awesome. Now these are uh, Pap Hybrid crossed with a luxuriance. So this should be very interesting. I think I have pictures of the parent plants for these. So I'm not sure what the expectation is for how big it'll be or what it'll look like at the end of it. Cause it's again, hybrids and already this is a app hybrid to begin with the pollen parent and you know cross the luxuriance should make for some interesting bullet leaves at the end of the day and you know i love my luxuriance quick segue brand new leaf on my luxuriance is popping out this guy is not even hardened off if you watched my last video you would have seen i think this one was just starting to pop so it's been a couple of weeks and look at the size of this guy and he is still a little floppy which is pretty cool it hopefully ends up nice and dark i mean the previous leaf this was I think one of the shipping leaves or might have been the second leaf. This one was the next one that came out a little bit more of a kind of awkward rounded shape at the bottom. You can see that there. This guy, really, really nice shape. It's a little, I mean, the, the lobes are a little bit asymmetrical, but hey, it gives it some character, right? But yeah, he's not even hardened off yet and he's already as big as my head. So that's pretty cool. I'm looking forward to seeing if this sizes up a little bit. I've got it in DIY pond, as you can see there. Looks like it's even got some arrow roots starting to form up here. Oh, yeah. Nice. Look at those arrow roots. It's pretty happy in my grow tent. I might be able to propagate this guy at some point. Nothing else. Let's see how he does. I would love to see the leaves size up on this. This is like such a nice leaf already. New leaf segue there. Especially if you're new to anthuriums and you've never seen luxurians before. So that is one of the parents, the mother plant for these little seedlings here. Not that specific plant, but another one like it. Now the hybrid pap should make for an interesting combination. I'm looking forward to that. So I actually have four of these in here and I bought four with the like intent of A, redundancy, and B, hoping to sell some of these afterwards. Substrate is starting to dry a little bit. I've been keeping them pretty moist. They've been sitting on top of my mills bow. I have a heat mat on top of the mills bow with an LED light above there, and it doesn't get super hot. And these guys have been doing fine. They sized up to basically hit the roof of the container. And then particularly this guy here, who is the biggest of the bunch, ended up kind of hitting the roof and didn't really get any bigger. So it's been kind of a couple of weeks. The three smaller plants are starting to size up to the same size as the biggest one, but that was by far the biggest to begin with. So we'll see, these were all seeds that just germinated when I got them. So I think I've had these for probably close to two months now, maybe a little less than that. And they started off as just germinated seeds and they have popped into this so far. So this is great. So what I'm going to do now is just like I've got with my pap crystal dark crosses here, I'm going to put these into a seedling tray. So we'll get there. And these are all going to go also into tree fern fiber. These guys I got from a fellow on the Anthuriums Canada group named Dustin. Dustin has a pretty awesome collection of plants from the ones that I saw that he sent me. He seems to sell pretty often on there. I will link the Anthuriums Canada group. If you're in Canada, you can check it out and maybe you can pick up some interesting plants from there as well. Let's take these guys out one by one carefully. I'm going to pop them into my little 
dish here. And then we'll put them on a piece of paper towel to dry off just like the rest of these guys. All right, so let's work with the moss here and see if we can get these out without too much trouble. I'm looking forward to putting these guys into a substrate that doesn't stick so much onto everything. The roots, you can still see the seed sheath here. It's got one good long root on this big guy, a couple of small ones. I'm not gonna be nearly as picky about taking a moss off of these guys because they're so small. I really don't want to do any damage. This guy is looking pretty good. He has one longer root and one shorter root. I'm very hesitant to pull on these bits of moss too much because I don't want to kill the only root on that plant. These leftover three are even smaller, so it's going to be a little bit more of a tough time to get them out. But once they're out, they're out, and hopefully they can grow independently and not kind of clobber their neighbors. The worst part of having this many small plants in moss, and you're going to see this even worse soon, is that they're prone to having their roots kind of tangle up inside of the moss. And already with roots this small, with moss, it's really hard to tell what's root and what's moss. But when you've got a bunch of little tiny plants and they're all sitting in the moss together next to each other like you know these guys are half an inch apart it's bad news trying to get them out so i have to be super careful not to damage them pulling them out you know i may just do this okay so i got some of the top moss off without too much trouble it's a little drier on the bottom which is problematic all right cool so this guy has got a big clump of moss around his roots this is pretty sketchy i'm being as careful as i can but like Maybe it's time for the tweezers. It's really hard to tell what's moss and what's not moss. Wow. That is very small. Let's do the same thing here. I really don't want to rip any roots off. The root balls are so tiny. This is basically just the seed that's still growing out at this point. Like there's not a lot of root or there's almost no root at all. It's just the early formation of the root ball. So I'm getting what I can off of here and I'm not gonna screw around with it too much. So this one's all right. It's a little easier than the last one. That last one was pretty small. And we're gonna have to live with having a little bit of moss in our tree fern at the end of the day because I don't wanna take the risk of damaging these guys too badly. This one's actually got more root than the rest. So like there's a little bit of seed still left over there. You see that? You can see here, like this one is the biggest one by a long shot. And he's got a little bit of root coming out. He's actually got kind of two roots. Yeah. The others, they have one at most. And I don't want to mess with that too much. Like this guy looks a little bit better than the rest, but it's borderline. Like there's still seed on all these guys. And this guy in particular, I am very worried that I may have done some damage to what root it had there. The rest of them look okay. We'll see. I mean, I'm going to pot them up. The tree fern fiber, it's a magical substrate. We'll see if it rehabs these guys to the point where they're okay. All right. Now this is the uh, embarrassing part because I have, I don't know what's left of here, but there's a few of these Magnificum X Tezula Ace of Spades Dark Form that I got from Somia at Northern Plant Room. I hate to say this, but I've had these for over a year, like actually close to 15 months now. You can look at the date. So I got the seeds on that date. That is a long time ago. They have been in this bag ever since. I originally had six and shockingly, they haven't really gotten very big. I mean, They've basically been the same size for, I want to say probably eight or nine months. Recently, I did open them up and give it a little bit of my nutrient mix for my semi-hydro plants and just kind of dabbed a bit in there. And I noticed they did pick up quite a bit. And to be fair to myself here, I had a pretty nasty thrips outbreak in the cabinet that these guys were hosted in. And they have been sitting in the Ziploc bag and I was just like, they're in Ziploc. They are not going to get eaten by the thrips in there as long as thrips don't learn how to eat through plastic. And they've been kind of quietly just sitting there. You know, there's definitely some leaf loss in here, but as long as they're not dead, then I'm not gonna worry about it and I will just get to them when I get to them. So this is my own fault. All the other plants I had in the same order, I have like repotted since and they've grown to much larger plants. These ones are basically stuck in stasis until I can get them out of here. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is cut this bag open because I don't feel like risking damaging the plants in here because they're pretty far down. This is like a reasonably tall ziplock. If I try and pull them out and end up getting a handful, there's a good chance I'm gonna kill some more leaves and I've already got some leaf loss in here. You can you can tell by looking inside there. You can see there's quite a bit of dead leaf going on, and I'm gonna pull most of that off if I can without doing any harm to the existing plants. I don't know how many are left. It looks to me like there's at least four. There might be five. I know there were originally six, but I think one of them was kind of runty. So hopefully I can at least save the four that I can see well here. And once I get them out, I'll do a better count. So here we go, the scissors. Let's see what happens here. Do what I can to not trash the joint. 
Maybe I can get away with just one side. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm gonna just open the whole thing up and work from there. This has been in this Ziploc for so long that I don't think it really matters a whole lot. Definitely not gonna reuse the Ziploc. There we go. This is a safer bet, I think, than trying to pull them out. So we've got quite a bit of dead plant material in here. This is pretty soggy too. For sphagnum moss, it's way too soggy. So that's probably why it's yellow in quite a bit. Let's see if I can pull these out and get them apart without doing too much damage. Oh man, it's pretty sketchy. All right, there's a decent amount of roots in here, which is not a bad sign, I guess. But man, this is a mess. Okay, so let's see what we can extract from here. I see one, two, three, four plants at least that are pretty entangled. This guy's got it looks like pretty good roots. There's a lot of sphagnum moss in here. Okay, this one looks pretty decent. It's got one dead leaf on it. The rest look okay. Oh, look at that. Wow, it's like one long root. There's quite a few leaves on here. So I'm gonna take off this leaf that's dying and on its way out. Um, it's also got some dead leaf material. It's actually growing. There is a new leaf in the middle I can see popping out. So I'm not gonna bother trying to demossify these roots too much. Let's give it a little rinse and go from there. I'm actually gonna dip the whole plant this time around because it's pretty messy. It's got a good root on it though, so I think that's gonna make it just fine. So that's one. Let's see, I still got one more in here. So I think I must have lost two. This one actually looks pretty good. It's got good roots. Big dead leaf hanging off of it, but this one's got way more roots than the other one that was next to it, so that's a good sign. I'm throwing sphagnum under my table here, but I actually have a bucket down below just because you're wondering, am I tossing this wet sphagnum moss on the floor? No. I am not. I do see what looks like some root bits in here. Not sure what they belong to, but this one actually has way more roots than the last guy. So you can see there, this one's got way more root material. This looks quite a bit better. These roots are all good too, like these are nice. So that's two, no issues there. Ooh, so much green muck, gross. I'm just gonna pick through real quick, make sure there's no other plants that I missed. This is another piece of root with no plant attached, which is interesting to say the least. I think it must have just rotted off. And the rest of this is dead. So whatever's in here is gone. Let's look at this next batch here. I see two plants that are maybe not in the greatest condition. So I think at the end of this, I'm gonna end up with four plants. Oh yeah, there's like a lot of root material, some smushed up plant down here. This is so soggy. Like I clearly overwatered this. These guys are way more entangled and there's like, bits of root just floating in nothingness here. The problem with the algae on here is that it is so dense that you cannot tell root material from sphagnum moss. Like, I mean, this guy here looks pretty good. He's got some chlorotic leaves again, but I think I can save this guy. You know, on the upside, the sphagnum is really soggy, but the roots are not rotten, so I can still work with this. I'm probably gonna have to take off at least two leaves here because yeah, there's one, that one's just falling off already. And I think this one's on its way out too. So let's just pull that guy off without hopefully breaking the rest of the plant. Yeah, and this one's kind of chlorotic, but it looks okay. And then there's a new leaf, very tiny new leaf in there. I'm not sure if you can see that, if it'll focus. And last but not least, this guy is pretty well entangled in here again. And there is a mushed up mess of a plant down beneath, which looks like it's probably dead. Are there two plants here? Yeah, there are. One of these guys is just a stem. I'm not sure if it's gonna make it, but it does have roots. So there's no leaf on here. There was a leaf, but it's completely sogged right off. So that guy, you can see it's got a whole root system and the leaf is just mush at the top. So I'm gonna see if I can still get this guy to live. I mean, he does have okay roots on here. So I'm just gonna pull off the leaf bits that are currently hanging on. In this case, I think I'm gonna trim the top off because that stump is definitely a little rotten. Oh, that's hard there. Okay, so I'm just gonna take the very top bit off. It's actually got a little tiny trunk. That's hilarious. It's dry. Surprising. So I'll take the dead roots off and hopefully this will come back. I'm not counting on it, but it's definitely in better condition than I expected for having no leaves. The roots are good and it's got a little bit of, of stem left on it, which is pretty hilarious. You know, there's, there's definitely a chance that it still has some stem left and it's not rotten that this could do something. And see right there, this is actually hard which is pretty funny considering how small it is. And it's not root material, that's stem. And the roots are good. So we'll see what this does. I'm gonna plant it up just like I will with the other ones and see if it does anything. 
And this, I think, is the last one. I think I did lose at least one plant in full because I see some mush at the bottom that looks like it might have been remnants of another plant. This guy, he's got one leaf that looks okay. And then he's got a decent amount of root material. I feel like I'm going to have to go sifting through here because there were six plants originally. And I think there are five that I found here. And there might be one more in pieces somewhere in here. This guy, this root looks like mush. Yeah, this is toast. So let's get rid of that. You know, also the stem is firm on this guy and he's got a lot of roots again all right so i gave him this guy a little bit of a soak here i think i feel pretty good about this guy compared to the last one he's in better condition so i've got five of these guys and i've got four of the little pap hybrids you know first i'm going to quickly sift through here and see if i can find any remnants of another plant Yeah, I don't see any evidence of another plant in this leftover batch here. This was all strands of moss. So I'm gonna ditch this into my bucket here. And I'm gonna take a quick look through the rest and sift through and see if there's anything that might be a plantlet. All right, so I don't see any evidence of another plant in here. So I did lose one, but you know what? I was expecting to lose two, so I will take it and we'll see if I can work with this later. But this is where the potting mat would have come in handy. So now we've got all of our babies set up. This one is small enough that I think I'm gonna pot it the same way. So this one is another PAP hybrid. I realize I have a lot of PAP hybrids here. So there's yet another PAP hybrid. This is a Papillinamum X Dresslery. So you know what this is? This is a Dark Phoenix and I actually have two of them in here. These guys I picked up from a fella named Hector on the same Anthuriums Canada group. So if you're interested in that Facebook group, check it out. If you're in Canada, you might be able to pick up some cool stuff. This specifically was one of my wish list plants for quite a while. And I did manage to pick up two of them. And they're both looking nice. They are both putting on new leaves. Well, at least one of them is. And I'm going to put these both into seedling containers as well. So I will show you guys the cool seedling tray that I'm working on later. And all the rest of these guys are going to go into the seedling trays. So once we get to the old tree fern here, you can see I got a big pile of it. This guy here, the two Dark Phoenix seedlings, it looks like I did lose a leaf on one of these. This is the problem with having two seedlings in one container, is that you end up with sometimes too much humidity and they push up against the edge of the container and you end up with a munched leaf. You can see that one right there. This guy got a little too close and it ended up melting. It's definitely time to get them out of here or at least put them in their own individual containers because they're clearly running out of space in here. So having them in their own space is a good idea. So I actually have had these with Aleka at the bottom. So this was kind of semi-hydro, you can call it that. There's Aleka with a layer of sphagnum moss on top. And the reason for that was to be able to have, since I had these sitting on a heat mat, I wanted to make sure I could have a little bit of a reservoir underneath. So I kept a, you know, two, three, four millimeters of water at the bottom and it would just kind of wick up into the sphagnum moss and the moss would stay moist all the time. That was the general idea there. So instead of having moss all the way down and then when you pour water in there, it just sogs everything up like you can see in that Ziploc that I had. These guys sitting in. These have stayed reasonably moist but not soaking wet, which is good. So I'm going to take these guys out while I'm at it. So just to give you guys an idea about these Magnificum X Azo Spades dark form, this is the kind of condition they were in. Only one leaf left on this guy, but the stem looks okay. You can still see a little bit of the seed there, eh? right there. I don't know if that's bright enough for you. This guy looking quite good at the end of the day. He's got quite a few leaves, not as many roots as the big one here. This one's got both roots and leaves looking nice. This one also looking pretty decent. And this guy, just the stem. But the stem looks okay, so hopefully that works out. And the roots were fine, so also looking good. And as I mentioned, I think one of these guys had a leaf popping out right there. So this dude, this guy has a leaf popping out. And I'll give you a bit of a zoom on there. You can see him. He's just coming in. Apologies for the shaky cam. I'm zoomed in about 5x right now. So let's unpack these two Dark Phoenix seedlings and then we will see about potting all these guys up. So this one, I think what I might do is tip it out. You know, I'm a little more hesitant to pull this out with Leka. Can I get these out? Very carefully. Good, good, good. Oh, I got both. Okay, well, that's fine. Actually, all the Leka stayed behind. These guys are looking pretty good. How are we looking root-wise? Okay, we got some roots. Very small roots, but roots. Oh, there's even an aerial root. I mean, it's kind of an aerial root. It's hard to tell from this distance, but it's popping out on the stem there. There is 
was some root action growing up here. This was in the substrate from here down. This was kind of popping up above. So the humidity in the container was leading to early aerial root growth, which is cool. So I'm just going to get this moss off. There's not a lot of roots on these guys. Not a lot of roots, but they are looking healthy. So that's always a good thing. And they both, yeah, they're rooted. That's great. I don't want to rinse them too hard or pull on the roots too much to get this magnum moss off because they have so few little tiny roots that I can do some serious damage. So this one looks okay. He's feeling pretty firm, which is nice. So yet another pap cross. So that's like three pap crosses out of my collection here of just this batch on the table. And I think that's it for pap crosses. But I mean, three types of pap crosses is already pretty good. Between that, the crystalline dark cross the dresslery cross and then the lux pap hybrid cross pretty good selection there this is the last dark phoenix with the melted leaf attached i may leave that melted leaf he's got some green still on there so i think i might just leave him alone i don't want to mess with him too hard i got these guys as literally just post seed like they were sprouted seeds they've grown a decent amount in the i think kind of two months that i've had them sitting in that same area with my other seedlings so i kept all my anthurium seedlings in the same spot I feel like they've all been doing pretty well. I haven't had any problems with anything, aside from the one that did dry out a bit and that I ended up losing some roots on up here. Uh, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put all these guys up in the same container, but you'll see it's split up pretty nicely. You can see that dried up leaf that kind of melted on the edge, but it's got enough green on it that I just wanted to let it get kind of consumed by the plant. So I will not mess with that one. I'm not gonna cut it off or anything. I will give it a bit of a rinse. I wanna be very cautious with hurting the roots on a plant that only has three and a half leaves right now. They both look pretty decent. I'm pretty happy with both of those. And if you have seen a dark phoenix in person or in photos, they are spectacular. I don't know if you watch the channel, You Don't Even Grow Here, which is Alice, who is another YouTuber from Vancouver, who's part of the YVR houseplants group I mentioned in my previous video. She has a dark phoenix that I is to die for. I cannot wait to see if mine turns into one that looks similar. Dark phoenixes are all over Instagram. You take a look, you'll see. I'll see if I can drop a couple photos up here for you guys to check out, but they are so nice when they're full grown. So I'm looking forward to having a couple of these and I'll pick whichever one I think looks nicest and I'll probably sell the other one, assuming they both make it through to adulthood. So I'm gonna mix my tree fern fiber that I've got here. See that tree fern fiber. So this is New Zealand tree fern fiber. I, I don't use it a whole lot, but I've been hearing so much about it that I bought a packet of it. I think I have a pack here. This is New Zealand tree fern. This guy, not cheap, so I don't really want to have to buy tons of it. I don't really want to mix it with anything else. I think perlite is probably a good combination for the tree fern. I'm going to cut it with some perlite that I've got here. Tree fern's been around for a long time, like a long time as far as I know. Uh, it's one of those things where the houseplant groups and society and, and YouTube channels, etc., have started getting into it now. I think it's one of these things that's kind of cyclical and people will just forget about it for a while. It's used in vivariums and things like that, and I think people use it with their reptiles. And it's really good, particularly for rooting hard to root plants, for rehabbing, and for seedlings. So for me, I'm definitely not using this stuff on all of my plants. Like I think most of my stuff is going to be in semi hydro but for plants that I care about as opposed to everyday plants I will try and use this stuff and make sure that it's on hand for any kind of complicated plants. It does seem to be pretty good for its uses so I'm gonna mix these together a little bit. I've got some kind of pre-moistened perlite here. I have not moistened this tree fern fiber from most of my experience. It's easier to deal with in terms of like loading up the seedling tray or pots when it's not wet but it does retain moisture super well. It also is pretty free flowing. There's like, it's very airy and fluffy. Like this is super fluffy. It's almost like powdery to the touch. I don't even take a good look what I've got here, but what I've noticed with this is that every plant I've had in it, when I take it out of the substrate to, you know, repot or to take a look at what the roots look like, the tree fern fiber literally just falls off. Compared to sphagnum, which I think would be like a comparable purpose substrate, this stuff just is so much easier to deal with. Like when you take a plant out of it, the roots are like A, white and fluffy, and B, they are clean. So I don't have to worry about what I just did and spend like you know, 45 minutes plucking bits of sphagnum moss off of tiny roots. That's one reason I'm moving into this stuff. I've had a decent amount of this stuff sitting around for a while. I've been averse to trying it because I wasn't sure how to work with it. So I've just started using it recently. I'm hoping that this works well. We shall see. So this is my first kind of like large scale experiment with tree fern fiber. I've only tried like individual plants here and there, little small ones, and the results have been good. Hopefully 
these results will be better because I've got how many different plants I'm putting in here? At least one, two, three, four, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 small plants that I'm putting into tree fern fiber. Although mixed with perlite, and like I said, this is primarily just to give it kind of a mixed medium because anthuriums like to have different textures, but also just do the cost of the tree fern fiber. And like, no joke, that small bag I showed you is worth in the neighborhood of 50 bucks Canadian. So unlike sphagnum moss, it doesn't pack down quite as densely. But sphagnum moss, you can buy a pretty small package, like maybe the size of this container. And that'll last you forever. Like, you know, they go a long ways. Like you, they unpack and it's so compressed in there. Tree fern fiber is compressed, but not nearly as much. So like the cost per use is quite a bit higher. Again, I'm going to use this on a need to use basis and just hopefully not waste it. So I'll be very careful on this attempt. I'm going to cut it with perlite. I may use it for tricky rehabs and things like that. I might use it by itself, but for this scenario, I think we're okay cutting it with perlite. So here goes nothing. I'm gonna mix this all together. This container is a 32 ounce, so that was probably about 16 ounces ish of perlite, maybe a little bit more than that that I threw in there. Gonna mix these up a little bit. I got a good old spoon. I don't know if this is gonna do any good. So let's give this a good mix. I may end up just busting in here and using my hands. I think it might be more effective. Yeah, I'm liking the looks of this. This should be nice. It's not a huge amount of perlite, it's just enough to give it a little bit extra airiness. A little bit of extra material in there it'll you know switch things up a bit so the plant have something to work with so i'm just going to give this a little bit of a toss kind of like a tossing a salad which is an awkward phrase when you're manipulating dirt this is not dirt this is the fiber of tree ferns that grow in new zealand and this, man this is nice i gotta say like it's pleasant to touch there's some pokey bits in there but it's, uh it's like earth mixed with tiny cocoa husks and things like that. That's what it feels like, but a little bit more fine grain. I definitely find this nicer and more pleasant to the touch than sphagnum, which I find is such a pain in the ass. It's dusty, it makes a mess, it sticks to everything. I mean, sphagnum has its uses for sure. Like I, I think I'll still continue to use it for things that need it, but particularly for plants where it's like, I'm doing like large scale propagation or something like that. Absolutely use moss for that, just cheaper in general. Like I've had the same like five packs of sphagnum moss for ages. And I think I'm only onto the second container out of five. And I've had those for probably two years. I was worried that I was gonna run out of sphagnum moss and no way. And every time I import from say Equigenera, for instance, I end up with a bunch of extra moss that I boil down. Like they pack their moss pretty loosely on the imports. And there's always a bunch of extra. I literally have a full bucket of moss that, you know, you can just boil it and use it again. For the moss that's really soaked in algae, like what I was showing you guys earlier, in those cases, I don't reuse it. I just toss it. All right, I think this is pretty well mixed now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to load this into my, wait for it, super cool container. La Pièce de Résistance, which is these cool little containers I picked up from Amazon recently. Now these are seedling trays. I actually bought these for the purpose of using for TC plantlets. I did purchase some TC plantlets recently and they are tiny. And I saw these actually in a video that I'll link if I can find it to somebody who was walking through how to ex vitro TC plants. And these are really cool. These are humidity domes. Like they're definitely not as sturdy as the really fancy humidity domes that you get on the big seedling trays, like the 1020 trays, but these are gonna do just fine for my purposes. So what this is like, there's a base piece right here with a container that you can fill with some water at the bottom. There are the these little inserts that have 12 seedling containers and they have a hole at the bottom. I don't know if you can see that there, there's a hole at the bottom of each one of these. So if I fill some water in here, it'll sit around and it can just soak up. Not that I necessarily will do that with tree fern. And then it's got this lid dome that goes over top and then it's got a little humidity controller type deal that I can pop in here and I can plug in, there you go like so, and I can twist it closed and open, and I can let humidity in and out as I would like. So there you go. So this is nice, and that fits 12. So I'm gonna pop in all the small guys that are going in here. So like I said, all these little tiny guys, I think I'm one, two, three, four, I got five and four. So that is 13 little guys, and I have 12. So we'll, maybe I'll pick one of these and keep them in something else. Yeah, maybe I'll reuse another container for the 13th one, because this is 12 up. And then these two bigger Ace of Spades dark form crosses, I will put in their own containers. So let's fill this guy up.
I'm putting about a half fill on here and then I'm gonna pop in the roots that I've got. May need to monkey around with this a little bit just to make them a bit more even. So the other nice thing about these containers, even though the little seedling inserts are pretty small, the other nice thing is that these are individual, so I can pull and kind of squish out one plant at a time if I need to. And I can even just kind of shoehorn it out and I will not run into the other plants. So I think I've got enough in here that I can pop these guys in. I'm going to be very gentle putting them in. Maybe we'll start off with the smallest guys because they are so tiny. You know, I'm kind of wondering, I actually have another of these trays. Interestingly enough, I think I paid $27 and this is a 10 pack. So I got 10 of these guys. I know it's not the most expensive plastic, but like that's still pretty good value for what you get. Two, three dollars a pop is pretty reasonable. Now that I look at these guys, and since I have an odd number, I think I'm gonna split it up. So I've got the older plants on one side and I've got the newer plants on the other side. That'll be a little easier to cope with. So I'm gonna space them out. So for these ones, this is gonna be the Magnificum X Ace of Space Dark Form. So I'm gonna put a little bit less of the transferrin in these ones because they had longer roots. And I'll leave some spaces. So I'm just gonna fill five of these. Since the roots on these Magnificum X Ace of Space dark forms are so long. I'm actually going to put them in first and then I'm going to put the tree fern in around them because otherwise I'm going to have a hard time popping them in here. See they comfortably sit in there and that way I can see the roots on the outside as they grow which is good. So I'll pop them in and this guy is the headless horseman here. You know it's it's kind of like sphagnum there's still the odd like big chunk in there but it's not the end of the world. So this guy These cells are pretty deep too, so even with the long roots on these seedlings, I can cover the whole root system, which is nice. I'm not gonna pack the tree fern too tight either. I'm gonna just like make sure it's got breathing room in there. The headless dude over here, just make sure that his crown is not covered and that he is still kind of sticking out. And pack them in a little bit and make sure that they've got kind of equidistant from the sides of the container. I'm being careful not to smush the leaves around too much here while I'm doing this, but I want to make sure that I get the top of the root system fully covered. And I'm just about done with this tray. And this last guy, I'm just gonna turn this tray around because I can't see what I'm doing super well here. He's got a bit of a funky root system where he's leaning to one side. So I'm gonna pack him in in a way where he's hopefully not too crammed against the edges. So I'm just gonna tuck these down a little bit. Otherwise these guys look all pretty good. This one's got an aerial root popping out that I'm gonna cover as well. You guys can see what I've done there. I've got five cells taken up and the rest are empty. And I'm gonna put this aside for now and I'm going to pot up the rest. And let's pot up these little tiny guys next, I think, because they are so small. These guys are the PAP Hybrid X Luxurians. So like I said, I've got another one ready to go here, get it organized here. So it's got this little clippy bit, which is the humidity tray kind of roof. You pop it through the hole, makes a little clink sound, and then it's in there and you can just twist it around. Pretty cool. The nice thing is that it all kind of sits on itself. So you can stack it up pretty good and they all stack together. So these guys are so tiny that I'm gonna make sure that there's a decent amount of tree fern inside of the container first. I'm gonna do this over top of the container because it's a little easier to see what I'm doing. Make sure we don't include any big chunks. Okay, these ones, the roots are slightly longer, so I'm gonna fill them a little bit less. That will be eight plants in this tray. Now we've got our trays looking good. So I'll put the plants in and then I'll top them off. I think I probably need even a little bit more on these because these are so tiny. This is like a cuticle pusher. You can call it a dab tool if you want to. It's kind of similar in how it looks. I think it has the same purpose. These are multi-use devices, but if you're looking to buy one on Amazon, look under cuticle pusher. You can buy them at the same time as a cuticle cutter, which is also useful for TC plantlets if you are in the market for one. So I'm kind of making a small indentation in the center of each one of these. And now I'm going to pop these Pap Lux 
hybrids over. I'm gonna put the label on here so I don't lose track of what's what. This is always important. Labeling is important. And now I know which ones are which. So these guys are gonna go in here. This is the biggest one and look at how small that is. So I'm gonna pop this guy in. I think I probably need to even top it off a bit more. The one kind of uh, negative about this stuff is that there are some chunks, but they're not huge and they're easy enough to kind of work around by like there's a clump here. It's not the end of the world. It's definitely easier to reach without hurting your plants. Okay, that one's in. Let's do the other ones. Since these ones are even smaller, I'm definitely gonna need more substrate for all of these. So this should be quite a bit quicker with the bigger plants. So I just need to kind of dump it into a container and then we're done. Indentations in all these, just very lightly. And then I'm gonna pop each one of these guys in. This is probably the second smallest one. So tiny. Pop this guy in and I'm going to put in some extra around the top. I'm pretty glad I put the perlite in here. It definitely gives it kind of more of an airy, chunky mix. It looks like this will kind of grab on pretty nicely, I think. I'll help these guys get nice and big. All right, now number three. These are so tiny. Uh, for somebody like me with decently large fingers, this makes me nervous, like crazy nervous to manipulate these, but it looks okay. I think we're good. This one, I need to tuck in a little bit because he's very close to the substrate. And then the last one is the smallest one. Oh my God, that is so tiny. He's not gonna have a whole lot of coverage right now, but yeah, he actually went in the easiest of the bunch, which is hilarious. Probably because I had the most substrate in the container already. So all four of those guys are in. Yeah, I would say that this stuff is pretty messy. So if you're not into mess, maybe not up your alley. All right, so here I'm going to do my PAP X Crystallinum Darks. So I'm gonna put these two, I think, on the... How big are these gonna get? I'm gonna keep my Dark Phoenixes on the outside here by themselves. So I'm gonna put these two over here on the side that borders up against the PAP Hybrid X Lux. So I'll put them both here. I'm just putting a label on the side so I keep track of which cells are which. And so these guys are the top two here. These are the PAP X Crystalline Darks, and like this is the one that has the chlorotic leaf on it. Not a whole lot of roots. The other one is a better shape, and it looks like it might have a new leaf coming. I'm not really sure. I think these guys have a little bit more root. I can put these a little lower down. I'm just gonna move it over. This is actually super handy. This cuticle pusher slash dab tool. Very, very handy because you can move stuff out of the way without hurting it. So particularly if you have big fingers like me, it's uh, a nice way of doing this without doing any damage. And the other end is actually like a cuticle, I wanna say slicer, cutter, something like that. It's very sharp. So multi-purpose tool. I think this thing set me back less than $15 for this and the cuticle cutter that I got at the same time. That was a very good idea. And I can thank uh, Crystal from the Anthurium's Canada group for that suggestion. She is also the TC queen of that group who happens to know the most about TC and she did suggest getting a cuticle cutter for working with the TC plants and now I see how useful this is for other plants too. Any kind of seedling actually. So I'm feeling pretty good about this whole seedling tray situation. This is looking quite good. Last one of the PAP X Crystallinum Darks. I'm gonna pop this in here. Maybe I'll face him the other way. I'm trying to do this without killing the plant. You want the crown to be able to breathe. You want it to be able to push out new leaflets. Leaflets? No. Leaflings? Baby leaves? Without getting trapped in the substrate. You don't want the new baby leaves to rot because they're in a moist substrate already. So you definitely want to keep that crown out. And if you get crown rot on your anthurium, I know you can probably still salvage the stem if it's a bigger plant, but like for these baby plants, that's pretty much the kiss of death. You definitely don't want to do that. So make sure that they are not completely covered up. And I think I'm just making sure that too. Like if I can start seeing roots, then I know that I haven't covered the right amount. It's the top of the roots is basically where I want it to go. All right, now my last two, I've got the Dark Phoenix, number one and number two. These guys, one of them is a bit bigger than the other one. And this one's got a brand new leaf coming in. And I'm hoping that him sitting out here with no substrate for a couple of hours is probably not gonna do any damage. But I'm gonna pop this guy in here. 
That looks pretty good already. You can see the height difference of these guys. Like these are quite a bit bigger. Useful. This was a good purchase. This has got a nice dull edge to it and it's kind of got a little bit of a scoop. Very, very handy. That looks good. I'm gonna tuck it in a little bit. And last but not least, so this is number 13 of this batch here. And that is the other Dark Phoenix. Better. He's got a little bit less roots, but he's also got three equal sized leaves, which is nice. So I'm going to do a little bit of tucking in on the side here and try to do this. He's actually got the arrow roots on him too, which I'm going to bury. So one kind of pro tip with anthuriums, well, pretty much with anything, but like particularly with anthuriums, when they're in humidity, that's pretty high. And like they start growing these arrow roots above the soil or substrate that you're in. You want to bury those when you repot. Again, up to the crown, no higher than the crown, but like you want to bury those arrow roots and they will root into the medium and you will get more growth and a happier plant at the end of the day. So make sure you get those in. So for this kind of usage, I think like the combination of perlite and tree fern is a nice combo. Cool. All right. Pretty happy with that. A little, uh, little messy, but I can clean up afterwards. So there we go. Over here, these are the PAP Hybrid X Lux. So there's four of those. There is two PAP X Crystallinum Dark. Although this is totally not dark because it's chlorotic. And then I've got my two dark phoenixes over here that I'm going to pop the label on before I forget. Can't forget the label. There we go. Nicely labeled on the side there. Sweet. All right. So that's my two trays of plants. So both of those guys looking good. Just give you guys a quick zoom in video so you can see what I'm talking about. Here we go. So these are the PAP Hybrid X Luxurians for those. These two over here are the PAP X Crystalline Dark. And then there's the two Dark Phoenixes. So these guys are all looking really good. Now I come over here and these are the Magnificum X Tezula Ace Dark Forms. This one's kind of flipped. Hopefully he straightens out a little bit. It's kind of awkwardly in there. You can see these all look pretty good. All right, and there's my handy little tool I was telling you about. That looks like it could hurt somebody. These guys, I won't show you the process, but I'm gonna water these guys in. Basically let them drain out through the drainage holes that are in here. And then I will leave them in the humidity container closed for the time being. And once they start growing tall enough to reach the roof in here, then I will transplant them into something bigger. And I think size-wise, what we're talking about is probably in the neighborhood of what these two guys are at. This being the Dark Mama X Ace of Spades Dark Form, and this one being the Ace of Spades Dark Form X Warcrianum, I think. So we'll see. So these two guys I'm actually gonna put into these larger, solo cup-esque containers. They're not solo cups because they're some knockoff brand. But what I'm gonna do here is just fill these dudes up with a bit of the substrate on both and I will moisten them afterwards. In this case, since these guys don't drain, what I may do here is moisten the substrate ahead of time. Up next, I'm gonna pot up these two Ace of Spades Tezula Dark Form hybrids, the Ace X Warok question mark and the Dark Mama X Ace. I'm gonna do both of these one after the other. First off, I think I'm gonna load up a little bit of the tree fern fiber for both of these guys. I'm gonna go straight in into the container this time. So for the tree fern fiber, I think I may moisten it ahead of time just because of the way I don't have any drainage in these containers. In terms of what I was doing with the seedling trays, these guys actually have drainage underneath. So if I open this up and I pop inside, I've already watered these guys in, but they actually have drainage underneath. So you can take this seedling tray and then there's drainage in here. So there's a little hole in each one of those guys. And if I want to, I can just water it in and then it'll drain nicely and I can empty out the tray underneath. In this case, I don't have that luxury. So just because I want to evenly water these guys in a little bit, I think what I'm going to do is moisten some of this tree fern into my little dish here first. And then I will transfer that into the cups once I mix it around a little bit. So I'm just gonna scoop some of this in here. I've got a handy scoop floating around here that I've been using for various things. So I'll just take enough to kind of line the bottom of each of these containers. I don't wanna use all of my tree fern that I've got in this bin because there's a decent amount in here I can use this for other stuff. And I don't really want it wet and sitting wet in a non-drainage container. So I'm just taking enough for these two containers, maybe a little bit more. So I will use that for the time being and we will go from here. So now I've got a decent amount of tree fern in here. That should be enough for the bottom of both of these two plastic containers. I'm going to wet this guy and give it a mix. So I don't want to soak it. I want it to basically just have enough to be moist all the way through. Since these are both going to be closed systems, 
closed containers. There's no need for drainage in there, but at the same time, there is the potential for water to gather at the bottom, so we don't want it to be overloaded. So I just wanted this to be moist all the way through, so I'll give it a mix. And any water that's left over, hopefully will drain to the bottom of this container. I just want this to be damp. I want all the tree fern and perlite that I've got in here to be damp and that's it. And that should be enough because I should not need to add water to this because the container should evaporate within itself and recondense. And that should be suitable for a closed ecosystem in there. A little biome on its own. All right, this feels like yeah, it's definitely heavier, but it's not super soaked. So this should be good to go now. And now I'm going to place enough to line the bottom of these. I want to have enough room so that the plant can still grow. So let's measure this out a little bit. I'll take my Dark Mama Ace. So I'm going to set this at the bottom. Already this is probably going to be pushing the size of this container, but it's only for the time being. And you know what, I'm probably going to up pot this reasonably quickly. So I'm going to start popping in a little bit at the bottom here of this container. And you know what, before I actually put the first plant in here, um, since these guys are still a little bit bigger than the seedlings, one thing I'm going to do differently here is I'm going to use this stuff. This is mike tree and shrub. So this is mycorrhizal fungi. Now this I usually use for outdoors. I don't have a water soluble one that I would use with my indoor plants. Like this guy is not water soluble, so I wouldn't use it with semi-hydro. In this case, since I'm using tree fern, it should be fine. This is the tree and shrub mix but as far as i know and i've watched a couple of videos on this specific brand i think gardening in canada has a good video talking about this this was pretty inexpensive it's a pretty big bin i use it outdoors with my tomatoes and some of my garden veggies and I had like a really nice healthy root systems last year that were definitely an improvement over the year before when I didn't use it. I've got the veggie one for that. As far as I know, these are all kind of the same. The actual fungus in here is basically the same across like brand mycorrhizae. So in this case, I'm going to use it just because these guys are in tree fern and perlite. It's pretty dry substrate. These are not tiny, tiny seedlings. Like I didn't use it with the other seedlings in these trays here because I mean, there's not a ton of room in these plugs for the mycorrhizae to do a whole lot and they're probably gonna get transplanted up pretty soon anyway so it's a bit of a waste so i'd rather use it in the container it's a little bit larger where the roots are more established you need to have roots on the plants for this to do anything to begin with the mycorrhizae form a symbiotic relationship with your roots the fungal spores get in there and they create something called the hyphae which are basically like kind of like root extensions that can multiply the absorption of nutrients and they transfer sugars back and forth either way it basically adds quite a bit of oomph to your roots system and it makes everything more healthy all around it. So I don't know specifically whether this is the best one to be using with anthuriums, for instance. It's definitely not on their list of genuses that are not okay to use with it. So that's all right. But I think there's better ones to use for semi-hydro for sure. Like I've heard great white, I believe is water soluble. I have some of that coming in and I'll test it out with my semi-hydro. But for plants that are not in semi-hydro, which again, like seedlings and things like that, then in that case, I'm okay with using this. Since I've got this floating around for outside anyways, I may as well try it. It can't hurt. Worst it's gonna do is nothing and be a waste. I think the box says it needs to be stored in something like between two and 20 degrees Celsius. I don't think my house gets all that hot in the winter months downstairs here. I don't think I had this in the summer, so I usually keep it in my garage, which is a little cooler anyhow. But I know that as far as I know, it can deactivate or be inactive below or above a certain temperature and they may just end up getting killed off so whether it works or not we'll see but uh you know at this point i'm kind of like i don't think it hurts so i'm gonna give it a shot i actually have some of this sitting here in a little container just it's kind of granular so since these guys are a little bit on the larger side they have more root surface area they're gonna have a bit bigger of a container to work within i think it's probably okay to use the mic with this i like i said this is kind of experimental i've used it before I'm, i've used it outside to some success the indoor stuff since it's not water soluble this brand i'm not sure how well it's going to work but you know what it can't hurt so let's give it a shot i'm going to just give these guys a little bit of a, a roll in the myco before i plant them in so i'm just kind of dunking the roots in here they're sticky enough since they're still a little bit damp to pick up a decent amount of it i don't think i'm using this per directions because normally you kind of mix it into the substrate but in this case i am just gonna go with it who knows if this is gonna do any good or not but what the hell this guy i'd like to have a decent amount of space this is the ace x question mark i'm gonna plop in some tree fern and perlite mix around it i don't want this to be too compacted so i'm just gonna lightly drop it down there the other one I believe the Dark Mama X Tezula Dark Form uh, Ace is a little bit on the taller side. So I'm going to probably put that one a little bit lower down in 
the container. So let's just kind of top this guy off with a bit around the edges. Kind of want him to grow up right. Definitely don't want to cover the crown, but I do want to make sure all the roots are covered so there's still some root that's sticking out here. So I'm going to make sure that's covered completely. One of the, the most important things you can do with these seedlings is as they're growing, and you can see there that there's still a decent amount of root that's uncovered here. Just make sure all the roots as the plant grows vertically are still covered because they will take off if they're properly covered in substrate. This is decently moist. I've got a little bit of water kind of trailing into the container down here. Um, which means that it's draining properly, which is good. Just gonna make sure all of my roots are covered. I'm not pushing hard here. I'm just kind of like tucking it in. Uh, I've got a little bit of root still out. I will let that guy settle down. You guys can see reasonably well. So I've got that guy potted up now. He's tucked in pretty good. So I'll just give you guys a bit of a close up of how I've got this tucked in there. You can see that the crown and all the roots that were visible before are completely covered now. So everything, all roots are covered. He's tucked in pretty good. Should be nice and comfy in there. I'm going to tack the label on and then I am done with this guy. I like to put the labels at the bottom. Just, I know it covers up the root area, but I feel like it doesn't obstruct the light from getting into the container that way. And I can always look at the roots the other side. So there we go, this guy's Hot it up, good to go. So let's put a lid on here and this guy can go back in my done pile. So that's one. I've got a little bit more of my tree fern and perlite mix kind of watered in a little bit here. Uh, just for anyone curious, this is tap water with its room temperature and I've mixed in, I think there's there's like a drop of Super Thrive in here, which I think probably does nothing at all, but I have a bottle of it, so I just finish it off and use it. And then there's three, four drops of the Schultz plant food. This is not nutrient solution. This is nothing too special. It's mostly just water. I will use nutrient solution once I transfer these guys to semi-hydro. In the meantime, I just do very, very mild fertilization and let them kind of acclimate to the soil, the temperature, my environment, the room, and that sort of thing. So now this guy, like I said, Said. He's got a leaf coming in, which I'm still a little bit concerned about because uh, I don't want it to die in this process. Got decently moist mix here. That looks good. I'm going to do the same thing and roll his roots around in the mic, mycorrhizal inoculant. So I'm just taking the roots here. They are a little bit on the damp side still from being dunked in the water. So I'm just going to drag it around, pick up some of these granules, just enough so it's kind of like in and around the root system and hopefully they will do their thing once they're nicely in the substrate. So I'm pretty much good with that. I'm just gonna make sure all the roots have kind of like an even coating. And now I'm gonna pop this guy in. So now since this one is a little bit taller, I want him sitting a little lower in the container. So I'm gonna put him down towards the bottom and then I'm gonna backfill the tree fern and perlite around it. Also, he's kind of like lopsided. He's growing in one direction here. So I'm gonna see if I can set him up to grow a bit more vertically while I'm at it because you know, symmetry. So I'm trying not to hit that new leaf coming in either because it's right in the middle. So let's go kind of tuck in one side then tuck in the other side. Now this guy is gonna push up against the roof here pretty quickly. I do have some other plastic containers coming in that are a little bit taller. I think I have some 20 ounces with a dome lid. I believe I mentioned those in my previous video, but I will show you a picture and drop a link in the description. They should accommodate a slightly larger plant in here with a dome on top. So there's quite a bit of room to grow in there. I'll probably up pot that as soon as I have those in hand. I'll try not to disturb the roots and just kind of pluck them out and put them into a slightly larger container. But at least this way he's out of his temporary home where he was really crowded in that plastic bag and he has a bit of room to breathe in the meantime. So let's just make sure he's nice and tucked in here. I think we're pretty good now. I'm gonna add a little bit more just so that it's kind of evenly sorted. And I'm making sure that leaf, that one little leaf is still properly exposed to the air because if I cover that up, it will die. I'm gonna use my dab tool just to kind of like adjust things in here because I don't wanna break anything with my fat fingers. So this guy has a little less substrate than the other one. I think he'll have more room to grow vertically, but he'll have a little bit less room for rootage to grow. I am going to now label this guy pretty decent. Let's see what that looks like there. Yeah, look pretty good. I left the one little leaf in the center uncovered, untouched. You can see it's still visible. So yeah, I left that one little leaf in the middle there untouched. I'll zoom out a bit. You guys can see what the rest of the plant looks like. It's tucked in pretty good there. So again, this is the Anthurium Dark 
Mama X Ace of Spades Tizula Dark form. So it uh, looks pretty good. I think we're good to go here. So I'm just going to close this guy up. All right, now we are labeled and all set. That guy's good to go. So I've got a whole pile of seedlings now that I'm going to get to watch grow, hopefully into something really interesting. And you know, we'll, we'll see how this uh, combination of tree fern and perlite works out. Pretty happy with this so far. It's definitely easier to work with than sphagnum moss. Let's see how it holds up for rooting and for growth going forward. I'll try and give you guys some updates on this as things progress. I really hope my uh, older seedlings, old, old seedlings, these old babies that have been here for a long time, I really hope these guys pick up and keep growing where they where they left off. So again, these little seedling trays looking good. I'm gonna pop the uh, humidity domes over top, both of them, and pop these into my grow tent. I have had to split this video into two chunks, so hopefully you can follow up on the next one. I'll publish them back to back so you can watch the whole thing if you feel like it. I'll be back soon with another video. I have a whole bunch of things queued up and some interesting stuff. Check back in a little while and you will see those coming up. So once again, I am Nick from Propist. If you enjoyed this kind of content, please do drop a like below. And I would really appreciate if you're subscribed to the channel because I will have more of this kind of content coming in the future. And it gives me a sense of whether people are interested or not so that would be super helpful again like i'd love to build a community here and if you're interested in this kind of material and you do enjoy your anthurium repots come on back i'm just gonna have more for you so i think i have a monstera repot queued up next i have a couple of interesting monsteras that may not be the ones you're probably thinking of right now those should be a lot of fun to do some repotting with too so thanks again for being here come on back i will see you next time appreciate your time i'm nick signing out i will see you in the next one cheers